Hey guys, welcome back. Just in case you're new to this channel, my name is Karina, and this channel is all about Canada, like living in Canada, immigrating to Canada, enjoying Canada. And this video is going to be about things which I would have known before I came to Canada. I'm right now in the Mission Creek Recreational Park in Kelowna. Just because, why not? <laughs> Honestly, Kelowna is just a beautiful city here. But that's not why we are here. So let's get started with point number one. First thing I would love, like I wish I would have known before I came to Canada, is credit history. No matter where you're from, as soon as you land in Canada and you never owned a credit card in Canada or anything before, you have zero credit history. So that means basically you don't get a credit card, you can't finance a car. Sometimes you don't even get a phone plan or internet plan without paying a deposit. So with a deposit I mean for example for an internet plan and TV plan back then I remember we had to pay $400 on deposit which we got returned after two years. But just to sign up for internet and TV you have to pay $400. And just to sign up for a phone plan, you have to pay extra four hundred dollars. So that is pretty crazy when you think about it. Like same with a credit card. To gain credit history, you have to have a credit card. But you don't get a credit card without a credit history. So kind of tricky. What banks usually do now is they freeze up a special amount from your checking account and put it into a savings, which you cannot touch. Which they freeze it basically. And whatever month they froze, you get a credit card. So if you want to have a credit card with $2,000 credit on it, it frees $2,000. So just in case that you would leave Canada and you're in debt, they still get the money back, which makes sense. However, that means your starting cost is quite high. And point number two, oh, just by the way, a little disclaimer, the order <laughs> of these points have no relevance whatsoever. It's just how they come to my mind and how I want to talk about it. So, and help you guys, of course, with it. Okay, so point number two, a job offer does not equal a job offer. <laughs> like we thought initially that, oh yeah, like a job offer, as soon as the company wants to hire you, you get the points for the express entry ranking system and you got your express entry and permanent residency like that. Yeah, no, uh-uh. What they have to do is, you have to get an LMIA, that's a labor market impact assessment uh, from the employer that wants to employ you. Because otherwise, a job offer is worth nothing when it comes to immigrating. Other than you have a job, you can pay your bills, etc. etc. But it won't help you immigrate to Canada. Then also something super important, point number three is the healthcare system. In most provinces, you're not going to be covered for the first three month so you have to live in a province for three months to be covered by the free healthcare system so you should make sure when you first land in Canada that you have like a travel insurance or whatever because if you are within these three months and you need to go to the hospital you still have to pay for it and also hand in hand with that goes the healthcare system is not completely free like of course you have to pay taxes but when it comes to a dentist or you need classes or whatever it can get super expensive like if I would have known that I would have fixed all my wisdom teeth and everything before I actually came to Canada point number four completely unrelating to the healthcare system is that domestic travel is very expensive oh and mosquitoes are eating me alive if you are if you want to fly from let's say Toronto to Vancouver you pay a fortune sometimes it would be cheaper to fly from Toronto to a US city and then from the and US city to Vancouver. Crazy, I have no idea why that's happening. However, if you want to see a lot of Canada, oh, here's a little friend. Talking about Canadian wildlife. <laughs> Where were we? Oh yeah, travel. Yeah. So if you want to, if you're planning on seeing a lot of Canada, bring a lot of cash, because flights, 
which you should fly or even renting a car and everything is pretty expensive. Point number five. <sighs> yeah, immigration. Becoming a landed immigrant, becoming a permanent resident is super stressful and by far not as easy as I thought it would be. First of all, I completely understood the job offer thing wrong. <laughs> so all my points I would have gotten just from the job offer was not worth anything. So I had to get some more work experience in to make sure that I get that I get enough points for the CRS score system to make sure I get enough points to be eligible for express entry and getting the permanent residency. And for that, I wish I would have known that if I can speak a little bit of French, that it would help me with immigrating. Because Canada is bilingual, so English and French, they give you points if you have a language skill test in French as well. Well, you of course need the English one, but the French one would help too, even if it's just a little tiny bit. That will give you a few points here and there, and that can make a big difference. So I wish I would have had some French speaking classes or whatever, just to make sure maybe the immigration would get a little bit easier for me. Or not easier, but would have happened faster. The next point is basically covering er everything when it comes to expenses. Like I was not aware on how expensive, for example, car insurance can get, especially if you're new to Canada. Like it doesn't matter if you drove in your home country for so many years and never had an accident whatsoever. They mainly look at their Canadian driver record and driver history. But on top of that, the car insurance in general is pretty pricey. Same thing, by the way, for phone plans, alcohol, internet, TV, and also real estate, depending on where you want to live. So for example, houses in Toronto or Vancouver, insanely expensive. Where it's like when you're more into like the urban and not so like big cities, it gets a little bit better, but still it's very pricey. So it's not as easy to buy a house as you might think. Point number eight, employers are not waiting for you. Like it doesn't matter that you're the best in your home country or whatever. They're not just waiting for you to just show up on the doorstep and be there. You have to fight even harder to get where you want to go and to get a job, a good paid job in your trade, in like, your studies, in your field. So don't underestimate the competition just on the Canadians or you wanting to get a job. So if you're good in something, take it, improve even further and try to get as ahead as just simply possible. And that is also like point number nine. Networking is key. Like to get a job here in Canada, you have to be well connected. So try to join Facebook groups, just try to um, join associations or meet with people and try to get known. Oh wow, and the sun is very intense right now. Whew. But it's good. <laughs> uh, so try to network as much as you can because that will get you to places. And then point number 10, I wish I would have known what a double double is. <laughs> For everybody who already lives in Canada, you guys know all too well. Oh, wow, this sounds crazy. For all of you who already live in Canada, you all know way too well what Tim Hortons is and what a double double is. However, to everybody who hadn't been to Canada yet, a double double is basically a coffee at Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons was like the most liked coffee branch around Canada, and they're pretty good. When you're in Canada, or a double double. Yeah, so that was it for this video today. If you liked it and you didn't do it yet, hit the subscribe button, bell icon right next to it and like this video. Because honestly, this is going to help me and the channel a lot. Just because it tells YouTube, hey, I like your video. <laughs> and then we will see each other at the next video. Cheers.